Even though I love to travel and try new things, we all experience homesickness. And there isn't a better remedy than food to remind us of our family and friends. Everyone has foods that remind them of home. It's of that kind of food that I'm making today. A yogurt marinated butterfly leg of lamb is my definition of comfort food. It's tender and perfectly cooked and made even better by the additions of almonds and honey. You can't go wrong with roasted vegetables. It's the best way to bring out a vegetable's natural sweetness and all you have to do is throw some spices on it to make it a brand new side dish. To me, home tastes like apple pie. While it isn't something my mom made growing up, it really is a North American favorite that everyone can relate to. It's also surprisingly simple, and while my mom can make it, she's pretty good at scooping ice cream on top. Food really does have some powerful effects. Just the smells can bring you back to some pretty special places. So that's what I'm going to do today, as I return to the foods that always welcome me home. If you're gonna welcome home a close friend or a family member, my yogurt marinated butterfly leg of lamb is the perfect way to do it. Let's get started on that marinade. In a bowl, I'm gonna combine one cup of Greek yogurt, six cloves of crushed garlic, one and a half tablespoons of ground coriander seeds, one tablespoon of ground ginger, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground cloves, one teaspoon of ground fennel, one teaspoon of turmeric, and one teaspoon of whole black peppercorns. Let's mix it all together. So let's set our marinade aside. Here I have a leg of lamb that's been butterflied by my butcher. Makes your job way easier. Let's take our marinade. Make sure you get all of it. Using your hands, massage it all throughout the lamb. So let's start to roll our lamb. Try to keep it as even as possible. Let's tie it up with some butcher's twine. Here I got one piece. Bring it underneath. Start in the middle. And give it a good double knot. right in the middle. Let's trim off the excess string. I'll cover the bowl, pop it in the fridge, allow it to marinate overnight. Let's take that marinated leg of lamb to the next level with a nutty and spicy glaze. In a bowl, let's combine two tablespoons of ghee. This has been melted. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. One tablespoon of honey. two tablespoons of almond butter, I have two green chilies that I've finely diced, let's 
let's add in some spices. One tablespoon of fenugreek leaves. To punch up the heat, one tablespoon of red chili powder. Half a teaspoon of ground cardamom pods. Let's mix this all together. Let's set this glaze aside and grab our marinated leg of lamb. This lamb's been marinating overnight and it's had enough time to absorb all those really delicious flavors and have the yogurt start to tenderize it. Here I have a parchment lined baking sheet. Let's lift up our lamb leg. Season it generously with kosher salt. And now let's dump our glaze all over. Spread it on, it smells beautiful. I'm gonna roast this leg of lamb in a 375 degree oven until the internal temperature reaches about 145 degrees. That will give me medium. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half. But feel free to adjust that time according to your liking. Here's our beautifully roasted leg of lamb. I've allowed it to rest for 30 minutes. That ensures that all the juices stay inside the piece of meat. The glaze has charred up really beautifully. Let's take a look at the inside. Nice thin slices. You've got this beautiful chunks of garlic from the marinade. Let's put it on our board. I'm telling you, there's no better way to welcome somebody home than with my yogurt marinated butterfly leg of lamb. There's nothing like the smell of roasted vegetables to welcome you home. And my spice roasted vegetables are simple and delicious. Here I have some peeled parsnips. And what we're gonna do is just cut them into relatively large chunks. Cut them at an angle about this size. If they're really wide like this, you can cut them in half. I also have a turnip and these are really earthy and kind of taste of cauliflower and they're so beautiful when they're roasted up. I have one peeled sweet potato. They roast up so wonderfully and they have this almost nutty, sweet, creamy characteristic. Here I got one pound of baby potatoes. I'm just gonna cut them in half. Now let's incorporate some more flavor. I got ghee, three tablespoons of it. If you can't find ghee at your local grocery store, you can use olive oil, melted butter, or if you're really in the mood, duck fat. Let's put this on top. Now let's add some spices. I got two teaspoons of fennel seeds. This will add some really nice sweetness.
one teaspoon of cumin seeds, and for some color, one teaspoon of turmeric. I love roasting root vegetables with some herbs. Sage and rosemary are a beautiful combination, and rosemary can tend to be overpowering, so I'm just gonna lightly bash these five sprigs, and as they roast in the oven, they'll give a really nice perfume. I have a handful of sage leaves, and I'm just gonna tear them up in my hand. Season generously with salt and pepper. Let's place all of our vegetables on a parchment lined baking sheet. Spread it all out evenly. Let's put this into a 375 degree oven, take 45 minutes to one hour to make sure that the vegetables are nice and soft and tender and really crispy on the outside. I don't like to cover them. I wanna make sure that the oven caramelizes all the natural sugars in our beautiful vegetables. How delicious do these look? We have so many nice caramelized bits. That rosemary has got nice and charred and the sugars inside all the root vegetables have caramelized beautifully. These are really special. The color is so beautiful because of the turmeric. Who would have thought that a few simple ingredients can turn the humble root vegetable into something really special? My spice roasted vegetables are the perfect way to welcome somebody home. There's nothing more comforting than tucking into freshly baked apple pie. And my apple pie has a couple of twists that I think you're really gonna love. In this bowl, I have 10 Granny Smith apples. I've cut them into eighth of an inch slices. You don't want them to be too thick because they're gonna bake in the oven for about an hour. And you want them to get nice and soft, but still retain their texture. Let's add two tablespoons of flour. I know it sounds a bit strange, but it's really gonna make the syrup nice and thick and really rich. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar. and the zest of one lemon. Now let's add some spices. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. One teaspoon of ground fennel. Half a teaspoon of ground ginger and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. Mix it up with your hands. I'm gonna set these apples aside for about 20 minutes, and while that happens, I'm gonna show you how to make a super flaky pastry dough. In a food processor, add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of kosher salt, a half teaspoon of ground ginger, a half teaspoon of ground star anise, and one teaspoon of sugar. Pulse to combine. 
Add one cup of chilled butter cut into cubes. Pulse until the mixture resembles a coarse meal. With the processor running, slowly add about a quarter to a half a cup of ice water until the dough just holds together. Turn the dough onto a floured work surface. Divide into two portions, flatten into discs. Cover each with plastic wrap and refrigerate for at least one hour. Our pie dough has been resting in the fridge for one hour. Let's roll out the bottom crust first. Let's put a tiny bit of bench flour on. When you're dividing your pastry dough, divide it 60-40. That way on the bottom, there's enough pie dough to go up the sides of the pan. Let's roll out our dough to about an eighth of an inch. So using the rolling pin, roll up the dough back onto it. Set it off to the side. Grab our dish and lay it right over. You gotta be a bit gentle. Just let it fall in, push down on the bottom. So what you wanna do is you wanna push the pie dough along the edges, trimming off extra dough as it comes off. Before we put our filling in, it's really important that we poke a couple holes at the bottom of the pastry. This ensures that the bottom crust doesn't rise. Now let's add in half of our apple pie mix. We've put down half of our filling. Let's lay in one tablespoon of unsalted butter that I've cut into cubes. And as the apple pie starts to cook, the butter will melt and you'll get this really luxurious filling for our pie. Let's put our other half of the apple pie mixture on. Let's put our remaining one tablespoon of cubed butter on the top. Now let's roll out the top of the pie. So again, let's roll up the dough on our rolling pin. Now, just like we did for the bottom, let's press along the edges, trimming off extra pastry. So now we'll make our pie look extra special. Let's crimp around the edges. Watch this. Let's cut some bent slits. This will ensure that as the apples cook, there's somewhere for the steam to go so you don't burst the pastry.
Now to give it a really shiny exterior, let's brush it with some ink. And for that nice caramelized crunch, sprinkle with some sugar. Now let's bake at 375 degrees, an hour to an hour and a half, until the crust is nice and golden brown. The whole house smells amazing. You can see that the apples have cooked down quite a bit, and the interior is rich and luxurious because of those cubes of butter. Honestly, what better way to welcome somebody home than with a freshly baked apple pie? My wife and I lived in Paris for a year, and when we came home, my parents threw us this really big welcome home party. And today's menu remind me of the flavors and smells of that day. Our butterfly leg of lamb is really delicious. It's kind of a showstopper piece because it's opened up like a book. There's no bone in it. And it's beautifully marinated with yogurt, Kashmiri chilies, almonds, and it just tenderizes that meat. And if you're not a fan of lamb, this recipe will change your life. Roasting vegetables are an excellent way to really enhance the natural sweetness that vegetables have. No sugar necessary. Honestly, the oven does all the work. And when you add spices to the mix, it really elevates that dish. And now you've got something completely new to add to your dinner table. There's nothing like coming home to the smell of freshly baked apple pie. You get that really flaky pastry, tart apples, and when you think of spices, normally you think of cinnamon. But I'm gonna add some Indian flair, and it's really gonna change the way you think of apple pie. It's a real honor welcoming somebody home that you haven't seen in a long time, so cook them a really delicious meal and let them know you love them.